Hi guys, Charlotte Reeves here from Unleashed Education. You've tuned into another editing toolbox video where we share a quick tip, trick or technique to help make your pet photography editing life easier. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about culling, culling in Lightroom. And I'm gonna share with you my super fast method that I've developed over the years that's gonna save you a ton of time. So there's lots of different ways to cull in Lightroom. So cull basically means that you're getting rid of the images that you don't want to keep and you are marking in some way the images that you do want to keep. If you're shooting for a client, maybe they're the final set of images you're going to show in their gallery. Or if you're just shooting for yourself, maybe it's just a collection of images that you want to keep for yourself of your own dog from that particular shoot. So when I go out and do client shoots, I'm shooting anything between 400 to 1200 images per shoot, depending on the number of dogs, whether I'm shooting action. And I generally am showing them around about 40 to 60 images. So I have a lot of images to cull, to get rid of. And that is the key word there, get rid of, because you don't want to be holding on to that many raw files per shoot if you're doing a lot of shoots, because you're going to run out of disk space really quickly. So basically, as soon as I've wrapped up the shoot, delivered products, archived the project, I am deleting all of those rejected raw files. So it's not taking up space on my hard drive. Okay, so how do we cull? What's the technique? So I've got this session here that I've imported. It's, it's one I did a while ago. It's not a client shoot. It's just a test shoot uh, that I did after I got my new Canon R5 camera. So, but it's pretty similar to a client shoot. There's around 500 photos here. We're not gonna go through all of them because generally it takes me sort of an hour, two hours to go through and do a full cull on a full session. But I just wanna show you the technique that I use. So I use the flagging system. So basically there's three different flag statuses an image can have. It can be flagged, it can be unflagged, or it can be rejected. So quick tip, before you even started, make sure that when you've imported the images, you have rendered one as to one preview. So that's just an option you can select when you import your images. And it will mean that when you click an image to check focus, when you view it at 100%, it's gonna be already rendered full quality for you. So you don't sit there and have to wait for it to load. That can really slow down your culling time. So make sure all those previews are fully rendered before you come back and do your culling. So what I basically do is start from the very start. I'm just in library module here. I always make sure that the images are set to the fit mode here. So you can either fill the visible space with the image, which basically means that it's going to cut parts of the image off, or you can set this to fit. And it's going to mean that when you get to your portrait images, you're going to see the whole image all at once. That's what you want to see here. You also want to make sure that when you zoom in, it's set to 100% because that's what you need to do to check focus. So if you click and it goes to something other than 100%, make sure you change that to 100%. If you're looking at it at 300%, it's going to look really noisy and you're not going to be able to tell very well if it's in focus. So definitely change that to 100%. So all you need to do is press spacebar on your keyboard to zoom in and zoom out, or you can just simply click with your mouse to zoom in and zoom out. So that is also gonna save you time. So from the very start, basically all I'm doing is my left hand is on the keyboard where the letters are, and my right hand is on the keyboard where the arrow keys are. So I'm moving along the film strip at the bottom with the arrow keys, and I'm using the keyboard shortcuts for the flagging with my left hand. So to flag an image, so to pick it, you would press P on the keyboard. To unflag it, say if you've picked it and changed your mind or rejected it and changed your mind, you would press U on the keyboard. And to reject, which is what most of them are gonna be, you would press X on the keyboard. So obviously, don't judge me by this photo. This was just a test shot to get my exposure right. So these first, say, five images, can go immediately. So I'm gonna press X on the keyboard and see it'll put a little X flag um, on the image. It'll also gray the image out. So you can set this to auto advance so it automatically goes to the next image. I don't like to do this because I tend to sort of go back and forth with the arrow keys and I don't really like it advancing to the next image automatically. So I would press the right arrow key on my keyboard and then press reject. So arrow key, reject, arrow key, reject, arrow key, reject. Now I'm getting into the actual proper images that I like. If I wanted to check focus on this, I would press spacebar to zoom in. Sometimes if you actually click, 
it's better because you can center the zoom on where you click. But I just want to check focus. Yep, looks like it's 100% perfect in focus. Really like the image. I'm going to pick this one. So I'm going to press P on the keyboard. Now, the next two images kind of similar. I've already got a portrait one. Uh, the tongue isn't great in that one. So I'm going to reject that one and pick this one because it's quite nice. And then just using the arrow keys to move across. This image here, no good. Expression's pretty bad. So reject that one, reject this one, reject this one. Now there's three here that are fairly similar. And there's another three that are fairly similar. So I don't really like the light in the first three. I think the backlight is a bit heavy. So I'm going to reject those first three. And then I'm going to choose, I'm going to switch between these ones while I decide which one I like better. I think it's going to be this first one here because the framing is better and she's looking at the camera. I'm just going to click to zoom. Yep, it's in focus. So I'll pick that one. Press X to reject, X to reject. These next two, not really loving the light. The foreground's a bit heavy, busy. I'm going to reject both of those ones. This next image is quite nice. I'm going to pick that one. And then out of these ones here, there's a clear winner out of these four. And it's the third one. It's got the best expression and the best framing. So I'm going to reject, reject, pick, and reject. You get the idea going through them one by one. Now there's another thing that you can do to reject multiple images at once. So say I get to these action shots here and I'm like, oh, these are okay, but I really don't like that very bright background in there. The dog was in the wrong position. The lighting was all wrong. I want to reject all of these images. So instead of going through them one by one and hitting X arrow, X arrow, X arrow, you can actually select them all at once and reject them all at once. However, you do need to have a particular setting turned on. So first up, we're going to select them all at once. So I click once to select number 25, and then I'm going to hold down shift on my keyboard and then click once to select number 30 and see how it's selected all of those images there. They're all selected. Now, unless you already have auto sync turned on, you will need to turn it on. If it says sync, just press the little toggle here and make sure auto sync is on. And that way, when I press X on the keyboard, it's going to reject all of those at once. So that's a really quick way to reject a bunch of images at once. So let's just say I've gone through the whole session. I haven't, but this is going to take a little bit longer than this. And I want to have a look at all my flagged or picked photos together. So down here at the bottom right, this is our filter bar. So we can filter the images by flagged. So you might not have these visible. If you don't have these visible, don't worry too much. You can turn them on, but they will turn on automatically. If you just select a preset, uh, there should be one called flagged. So I want to filter by flagged. And so it's going to show me all the images that I have flagged. So these are the images that I feel that are good enough to show the client. Once you've got these little flag icons up here, you can just click on them to either filter by flagged, filter by none. You might want to filter by and see all the rejected photos that you've chosen. Um, and so you can turn these on and off just by clicking on them nice and easily there. Now, if I look at these images and say, mm, that last one there, I'm pretty sure I got some better photos of that dog later on. I might decide not to include that one. So I can either press X on the keyboard or U to unflag. Now unflag means that I will keep the image and not delete it, but it's not going to quite make it into the final gallery. So as soon as I select one of those other options, let's just say U to unflag on the keyboard, it'll just take it out of that selection and only show the flagged images. Now, obviously these images are unedited. I'm not going to edit them right now because I just wanted to show you guys the culling. But I found this the absolute quickest way to get a final selection of images, as well as marking all those rejected images that I can delete later on and save my hard drive space. Now, some people use different ways of culling. So a lot of people use star ratings. Use whatever system works for you. Just make sure it's easy to do and you're not doing it differently each time. Consistency is probably the most important part of the process.
So there you go, all my best tips for culling in Lightroom quickly and efficiently. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments and I'll get back to you. And we'll catch you next week for another editing toolbox video. Bye for now.